Good morning. Um, yeah, it's been a while, so uh, I'm back. <laughs> it's been uh, about two weeks uh, since I uploaded my last video. It's now Sunday morning, 16th of April, 2023. Eight o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Um, why it took it so long to upload a new video? Well, I have I had no inspiration at all. Uh, the The weather wasn't that good. It was gray and rainy. Uh, I was bored. Uh, so I didn't have any inspiration at all to make a, a new video. So that happens. Uh, and it did. <laughs> oh, let me switch my uh, laptop around. So close it up. No reflections in my glasses. Um, but I have an idea. And I will share it with you in this video. So as a little boy, I grew up in the village uh, of Schagen. That's a little village uh, 80 kilometers north uh, of Amsterdam uh, and when I grew up I always went fishing uh, I went fishing in the local marina and watched all the boats pass by and I loved it uh, I, I, I am on my best uh, in on or around water that's my thing uh, I became a really strong swimmer uh, <laughs> I still fish and now I'm living in the boat on the water so I've got best of all worlds. So what's my plan? Um, I really like boats, as you know. Uh, I don't really particularly like sailing boats. I mean, uh, I'm a petrol head. I need engine power, motor power, horsepower. The more, the better. <laughs> um, but I get it. I, I mean, uh, living on a sailboat and traveling by sail, I get it. So it's uh, I follow Barry Perkins, The Adventures of an Old Sea Dog. I will drop the link down below. Go check him out. He's a really awesome English guy. Uh, and he's traveling, uh, circumnavigating the world on his own. He's halfway around, uh, well, a bit more than that uh, already. But he's doing great. But there you go. Uh, that's all uh, I will say about sailboats. <laughs> so what's my plan? Well, uh, I'm uh, living here in Amsterdam. Uh, and we have loads and loads of water here um, so I will travel uh, jump in my van and travel to some spots uh, the tourists or uh, foreign visitors probably won't see uh, and just uh, shoot some video and uh, share it with you and uh, get a better uh, better idea about Amsterdam because it's it's an awesome place so here we are when you look in the background, you see, well, this is my fan, this one here, there you go. Um, I'm at an industrial site called the Modemstraat. But that's not uh, what I wanted to show you. Here, let me switch the cameras around. Bang. There's a harbor there. Full of boats. Old ones. Um, do it yourselfers. All uh, some scrappy ones. But the thing I wanted to show you there, there's a support island for the offshore there. That's a party boat, the Ocean Diva. Uh, in front of that, there's another party boat. You can rent it and have a party. But the thing I wanted to show you, and that's been here for a couple of years, is. That one. Well, she is a beast. It's definitely uh, made of uh, aluminium, aluminum, tomato, tomato. And she's big. I think she's about six meters wide and around 20 meters long. And she's been here for at least uh, three years that I know of. Uh, if you need a project, here's one. Boy, she is beautiful. I think she deserves it to be uh, completed and go sailing. I don't know if it's, uh, if this is meant to be a sailing catamaran or just engine power. I don't know. I don't see any masts, but. 
She is a big old girl. Someone put some money in it, a lot of it already. But for the last three years that I know of, nothing happened to her. So, if you want to buy a project, here's one for you. <laughs> okay, on to the next location. And now we're at Schellingwoude. It's a really old part of Amsterdam. It used to be its own uh, little village, but it's uh, yeah part of Amsterdam. The lovely harbor here. Awesome, really cool place. If you want to know where we are, well, that one, that bridge is called Schellingwouderbrug. And that uh, will take you to that part. That's Zeeburg. That's a uh, well, pretty recent part of Amsterdam. It's uh, built on new ground, uh, which uh, we Dutch people are famous for. <laughs> we can claim it from uh, a lake or sea or whatever. And as you can see, lots of building uh, going on in the background. But where are we exactly? Well, these are the Oranje Sluizen, the orange locks of Amsterdam. We were over there, way on the other side, if you see that tower there, that's the old Shell headquarters. Uh, it's now a visiting center uh, with a panoramic uh, roof terrace that spins around. And uh, I don't know if you can see it that there is Damen shipyard and these are the orange locks in Holland and uh, particularly in Amsterdam uh, that I know of we built these artificial plateaus for birds to uh, nest on and they use it pretty much there's a grebe I think you pronounce it that way his partner is over there or two others Behind there, another one. So there are like four of them, two couples, I think. I believe they're made for life, so that's cool. Imagine when it's summer and it's a lovely day and you can sit over there. That's cool. So, let's walk around. I've been through these locks before with uh, uh, a little boat was about five and a half meters called Seki uh, I had the, that boat with my ex-girlfriend and we came from that direction into the city of Amsterdam Central Station by the way oh, let me walk on is behind this uh, weird looking structure I don't know what it is well, hey, who cares <laughs> and in summertime loads and loads of people are coming here just to watch the boats don't know what's down here let's see I don't know what this uh, these are for maybe it's an in oh it's an inlet look at that maybe it's a fish trap or something Well, not a trap to allow fish to go through. Can be. It's flowing pretty fast. Maybe I can find out what these are. Loads of trash in there. And this one. This one is not floating. Flowing. <laughs> floating is something else. Okay, here we go. Let me translate this for you. Orange Locks opened 18 March 1872. Sorry, there. This plaque is put in here by His Majesty's, well, King Willem III, 29th of April 1870. So this plaque was put in and two years later, the locks opened. A couple of boats in there. 
Nice one. Goeiedag. This one is from uh, The Hague. The other one I don't know. And the lock is opening up. Cool. Central station is there. Can't see it, but just to give you an idea of where we are. Control tower is here. Really cool. Oh, let's walk around there. Flying rats. They have a really bad reputation here in Amsterdam, but apparently they do do not do any uh, any harm or damage or whatsoever. So who cares? <laughs> <coughs> Sorry. Ah, oh, it's chilly. It's about seven degrees Celsius, I think. And this is a walkway for pedestrians you can go all the way across the locks to the other side you can walk it but of course when it opens you have to wait <laughs> and I don't know if it's open for cyclists as well I don't think so so there it is the orange locks a lot of those let me zoom in a bit those ships Where's my finger? There it is. They are old uh, inland vessels. They uh, went to the harbor of Rotterdam or uh, wherever and uh, filled up with a load and traveled through the rivers inland. Uh, most of them are around 35 meters long, built in, uh, well, at the end of uh, the 19th century, starting the 20th century uh, yeah and they have uh, they are big I mean 35 meters is, is pretty big and uh, they converted it to houseboat to houseboats I should say because yeah why not you have uh, plenty of space and the quality of the steel it's riveted is really good so that's why they survive a modern boat made of polyester or plastic or whatever or modern steel boats they are thinner steel and they do that on purpose of course so within 30 or 40 years uh, it's gone and you have to buy a new boat so that's a way to protect their uh, their uh, business how cool is this okay So here's a plaque that explains what this is. Uh, indeed, I was right. This middle section here that flows really fast is a fish passage. Uh, but in the old days, when it's built uh, around 1872, there was a steam water mill here. Um, that was used, let me see, uh, to drain the water from the canal to the Zuider Zee. The Ijsselmeer, we call that. Uh, we stopped calling it Zuiderzee, Southern Sea, because we closed it up with the Afsluitdijk. I will show, the, show you that on the map. Big ass anchor. <laughs> uh, underneath here uh, is the boathouse of the fire department. So that, that's what this is. Oh, you don't want to fall in there. So the middle one, that's this one here, is indeed a fish, pa fish passage. Ah, another sailboat coming in. In summertime, or when it's really go gorgeous we weather in uh, springtime, these locks are totally filled and you have to wait outside the lock for your turn. I know that because I had to wait for my turn. <laughs> There's an old schooner type uh, barge, sailboat thingy. Okay. 
and this is what the lock will look like in summertime as you can see it's full it says here there that in, on a yearly base in total uh, 65,000 recreational facets, uh, vessels will pass through these locks and 50,000 cargo ships that's a lot and it's totally free to use there's a few from uh, from a plane or a helicopter and this is a new pump they uh, they built to pump out water from both directions uh, going out to the, the lake or going in awesome never been here by myself well on dry land that is I've drove my boat here but well the former boat I had and that was about it <laughs> lovely place no look at that you should live there awesome so that's it for this episode of going places <laughs> that's how I'm gonna call, call this item um, I will do this more often if you if you like uh, I know lots of places uh, most uh, tourists uh, never come uh, and I can film them for you and show them for you um, but I can't do like three hours of it that's too much so uh, I will save up some uh, some of those uh, projects and footage and well use it in uh, future episodes uh, if you like it please uh, let me know uh, do you know a spot uh, around Amsterdam or in Amsterdam uh, let me know and maybe I will go there and film it for you okay so now I'm going back to my boat and I will tell you about my future plans right so now it's Monday morning um, the 17th of April uh, about 9:30 ish <laughs> and I will take you outside and show you what needs to be done on my boat there we go oh, Tosca that's uh, the neighbor's dog right let me switch the camera around right so the solar panels these two they're gonna come off I don't use them uh, they create a shortage a short somewhere in the circuit down below so uh, I'm not gonna use them I have two more up there in the white tarp so I'm going to, going to sell them or something so that's need, needs to come off I need to get a new hatch because that's broken on the inside I can't lock it uh, properly but I, that's uh, no biggie but what is a biggie that's my deck as you can see uh, there is there has someone uh, the previous owner put some uh, anti-rust on it but before he did he didn't remove the rust itself so underneath it the rust continues uh, to progress and it cracks open like this and then it spreads so I need to grind that out take the rust out same here this is a really good example you can see it bubbling so that means the rust is continuing to rust underneath this paint and it comes through here so it's it's not really bad damage but I need to address it and uh, while well, you can see all the cracks here I need to grind that out put some epoxy filler in it and then uh, uh, sand it down smooth and put some paint over it I have to uh, polish my rails that this is what we call fly rust it will polish off nicely but it's a lot so I have to do that and then we go to uh, my flybridge well in my previous video uh, I showed you that the lady of life is shedding her skin well there she goes this is aluminum aluminium <laughs> Uh, so this will sand off really easy 
put a, a good primer on it and then the right paint because obviously this is not the right paint otherwise it wouldn't flake off here uh, next to my diesel inlet there used to be a doormat and uh, they left it there in summertime and it got wet so it started to rust big time underneath it so the previous owner uh, did a pretty good job here I just have to clean it up uh, and uh, make it smooth with uh, epoxy filler yeah, more flaking and here <laughs> this will make uh, my uh, my uh, my job a little easier <laughs> but it sh should not do that obviously so here on my aft deck this is really bad the paint has cracked because uh, this this gray paint you see that's just a base coat it's a primer and uh oh there she is hey Tuska come here come on come here come on nope she's not up for it <laughs> hello hello oh you're such a cutie come on come here come here Tuska come on yeah come on come on oh my god <laughs> oh, there's a warm welcome. Oh, you're cute. Yeah, you're a sweetie. Hi. Come on. Come on. You know me. Come on. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> she's uh, still a puppy. She's not even a year old. So. <laughs> and there she goes. Okay. Back to my boat. Well. Um. Yeah, this is just uh, what I was saying, a primer, the gray uh, gray paint. So I need to grind it, this out as well and paint it. There's my hatch that goes to the engine room. I cannot open it from uh, the outside because I've put a lock on it on the inside. And here we have these two and one more over there. And I do not know what's, uh, uh, what their uh, function is. Maybe uh, old diesel tanks, I don't know. But apparently, they're welded shut, yeah. So they have no function left anymore. So maybe I can uh, grind it flat. And put some uh, epoxy filler on it. Okay. Now we have my flybridge here. And we have these weird tiles. Oh, sorry show you these ones and I have to take these out all of them as well and I do not want them back it's not my uh, my taste I don't like them so they're going to come off and so uh, when I do so I can inspect the floor or my roof <laughs> whatever which way you want to see it I cannot go upstairs because of my foot so that's it and then yeah just tidy up the wiring a bit better I have to replace this one as well I have a shore power that's gone here as you see there but that uh, connector doesn't fit on that one and that's weird this is uh, the shore power that uh, charges my, my uh, battery banks uh, down below in the engine room. And this one, if I were able to put it in here, uh, this one only uh, supplies uh, the, the 220 volt system we have here in Holland. Uh, and I have on the inside of my boat. <coughs> I'm gonna lose this one. Ugly bugger. Yeah, here as well. All kinds of holes and shit. Need to find a way to fill that up. I, I have uh, thought about a color scheme of my boat. That's my neighbor. But I'm not gonna tell you. 
this this is my dinghy and as you see there's a pretty uh, a pretty big amount of water in it and I'm gonna leave it there because it stabilizes the dinghy and it will not bang to my boat to the lady of life so yeah this is the outside I have to work on that as well but as you know I'm pretty bad on my left foot and I don't know if I can do it myself well I know I can't do it right now then we have this it's plastic uh, it's cracked it's not leaking though but it's uh, a difficult window to uh, substitute because of the bend and the curve in it Good morning. <laughs> uh, and then we have this one these are original this is not so what I'm gonna do this is uh, going to go come off these as well I'm gonna uh, take this one off and that one as you can see this is an end an end piece it's closed on this side this one is open on both sides this one as well and that's a closed one again this is the original patina so I'm gonna save that and I'm gonna substitute this with wood hardwood mahogany or teak or whatever maybe iroko I don't know how you call that in English and then we have this situation going on here this is not good this one uh, is leaking just a tiny little bit in the corner here but I don't know what happened here I mean I think they tried to heat it or something when they put it in to create the bend but it's turned milky same here there are little scratches on it and then so that's that needs to be replaced and this is uh, I presume done by the previous owner but that's not the right look for the boat there was I think kind of a trim running around this this uh, this deck because of all the holes here and maybe I can uh, replace that with wood but I'm not sure yet I haven't figured that one out yet but so here's my uh, my windlass I'm uh, considering it removing it and putting it down inside underneath here so it doesn't need to be up here to pull the anchor up or down so that's my thought so maybe I could put it downstairs inside but that's just the plan here's my uh, water inlet that one for my drinking water for my tanks they're under, underneath here one here one there they're internally connected so yeah lots to do and this is only the outside in the next video uh, I will show you the inside <laughs> maybe maybe not maybe so we'll see now I'm going to go inside because it's cold Ugh. this is the end of this video guys uh, well almost um, during Easter a couple of days ago or weeks ago I don't know uh, I shot some uh, videos at night some footage uh, of bats flying around my uh, my boat and I tried to catch them on uh, on film and I did so after this I will show you that and that's the end of this episode um, I noticed uh, uh, a pretty increase of uh, subscribers so thank you very much uh, I made a couple of weeks ago a video saying I was stated uh, I had 42 or 45 now I'm up to 65 so thank you very much uh, you're really helping me out um, that's the reason why I make this videos just uh, for you guys uh, yeah just to nosy around my life a bit <laughs> and how the life here in Amsterdam on uh, on my boat is uh, I hope you like uh, the item uh, I, I made uh, going places um, around Amsterdam I will do so more uh, it will always be uh, boat life related 
I'm not gonna go to a church or a mu museum. Well, maybe uh, a museum about shipping, but still, it has to be about boats. So, uh, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you don't like it, thumbs down and tell me why you don't like it, please, uh, so I can learn from it. Um, okay, that's it, guys. Uh, remember, after this message, uh, beautiful uh, footage of bats. Take care. I'm standing here on my aft deck and there are loads and loads of tiny little bats flying around here. Here, there's one. Really cool. I hope you got it. Uh, I got it on camera. And another one. <laughs> there's a good thinking. Dude, is that the first time you've seen a bat? Well, no. But this is the first time out here. Man, it's awesome here too. Cool, thanks. <laughs> there are the towers. Oh, you see them? Amazing. So cool. I used to live for nine years inside uh, city center of Amsterdam. And when we looked out, out of our window from three, three stories up, oh, take a look. You could see these uh, little bats flying uh, in between the trees, hunting for uh, insects. But it, there's one. Didn't get to see him up close as this. Very cool. It's cold though. It's about five degrees Celsius, I think. And another one. <laughs> really cool.